But uh, that, that's got to change. I think they're putting additional pressure on Jana and uh, covering her up, and then the other players aren't there to pick up the load. Well, their opponent today, Centenary College, also a member of the Summit League, they're struggling having lost six of their last seven. But this is a team that IPFW has played twice before, back when the Dons were independent. In fact, the last time was back in February of 2003. A game we did here on CATV, a 77-75 Mastodon win. IPFW is 2-0 against Centenary all time. Yes, I remember that game. I was on the bench for it. I also remember the first win down there. and So I'm hoping that that's a trend. Well, IBFW hopes to get back above the 500 mark today in conference play if they can defeat Centenary. It ought to be a good one. The Dons and the ladies from the Memorial Coliseum. Stay tuned. Starting lineups and the opening tip are coming up next right here on CATV. Hard. I go to class and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to the website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. We've all heard of blackouts. When the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts. You know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pink out? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close, and you'll learn what a pink out is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to CATV's coverage of IPFW Women's Basketball. Along with former assistant coach Alan Buck, I'm Mike Moss, and today's matchup it's the ladies of Centenary College from Shreveport, Louisiana, and the IPFW Mastodons were playing it at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Starting lineups being introduced for this game. We'll give you Centenaries first since they are the visitors. I've gone away to a college and, uh, where the class size is... Looks like this. At uh, one guard will be Britain, uh, Bethany Joseph, a 5'5 sophomore from New Iberia, Louisiana. At another guard will be Carolina Zalaga, a 5'11 junior from Osteen, Poland. Up front, you have Ann Farrell, who is a 6'2 freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Michelle Hale is a 5'11 freshman from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Leslie Forrest, a 6'3 sophomore from La Place, Louisiana. The head coach in his second year is Steve Curtis. Now for the IPFW Macedons, their starting lineup looks like this. At one guard, making her second start in a row, Chelsea Jackson, a 5'7 freshman from Flint, Michigan. At another guard, John Lewis Carlisle, 5'6 senior from Lexington, Kentucky, the leading scorer for the Dons, just under 19 points a game. The point guard will be Jordan Zoop, a 5'7 freshman from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Up front, Samantha Edwards, six, -er, six foot rather, red shirt sophomore from Oklahoma, Michigan. And Natalie Roberts, a 6'2 senior from Connersville, Indiana. The head coach in his third year is Chris Paul. Our officials today, Jerry Gibbons, Don Green, and Mark Briney, and we are ready to go. And the opening tap is controlled by Centenary. They're wearing the Marine uniform, but then IPFW gets the ball right back. So here come the Dons in the home whites, going from left to right on your TV screen here in the first half. That's Jordan Zoop with the basketball. Inside feed. Zoop will launch a three. Off the iron, no good. And stepping on the line is Samantha Edwards. So Centenary will get their first crack at it. He played 25 seconds. Well, we had an open look and didn't put it down. And that's been the story of the last few games, I guess. So hopefully they'll break out of that. Bethany Joseph, sophomore from New Iberia, Louisiana, really come on. And Probably. traveling call called on Ann Farrell. IBFW has one break now on the fact that their leading scorer for the year is out for the year, and that is a gal by the name of Sierra Bush, who is averaging 16 points a game. Unfortunately, blew out her knee in the eighth game of the season. IBFW again with the basketball. Samantha Edwards. Gets it to John Lewis Carlisle. 16 footer, good. That's fake by John, a head ball. Went underneath her. Very good. That's a good start. 2-0 Mastodons. 
Back come the ladies and nearly a turnover. Travel again. And indeed, the second traveling call. I haven't seen IPFW play in a few games, but they've come out in the press, which is interesting. I'm glad to see that uh, change yeah. the pace a bit. They had a tough three-game road trip where they lost a very tough game last Saturday at South Dakota State, and then, in all honesty, they were blown out at North Dakota State and then Wednesday night at the University of Detroit. But they are up right now 2-0 here with uh, the game about 75 seconds old. Chelsea Jackson to Zoop on the right wing. 10 on the shot clock. Jackson again with the basketball. Wants to drive. Forcing up a shot. Misses the mark. Farrell picks up the board. And here comes Centenary running the ball quickly. Shot is no good by Hale. Steve Curtis thought a foul might have been called, but not such luck. Jonna Lewis Carlisle off the glass and in. Jonna playing with a mission, it seems. She scored all four points thus far. Both scores off nice head and ball fakes and then taking it to the right. Zalaga into the corner for Farrell. Little pull up jumper from 10 off the rim, no. And the ball's knocked out of bounds and they say it'll stay with Centenary. I noticed in the stats that uh, IPFW is averaging nine less rebounds per game than their opponents. That'll be a factor today also on a rebound well. Inbounds to Farrell, rocked away by Roberts for a moment. Natalie has played well as of late. Nice feed to Joseph, but she's double teamed. Still a lot of time on the shot clock. Shot by Zalaga, no good. Kicking up the offensive board is Joseph. And there's the fear you were talking about, Al, the yep. boards. 17 and a half minutes left. A long three-point shot, good by Joseph. Four three, the Macedon lead has been cut to one. Edwards, oh, good recovery by Lewis Carlisle. Little baseline jumper gets the friendly bounce. John is hot today. And that's a great sign. Yes, it is. It's John Lewis Carlisle six centenary three yes. at the 17 minute mark. Zalaga has it taken away by Chelsea Jackson, but they get it back to the gents, and Forrest banks it off the glass and in. Well, it took a little over three minutes, but the big gal came through. And Centenary now posed within one, six to five. John Lewis Carlisle. Zoop will try another three, and Jordan hits. Or maybe yeah. it's the Memorial Coliseum magic. Maybe it is. I, good to get a little distribution. Oh, there's a nice deal. Chelsea Jackson and her numbers. Chelsea going to launch it from 10. The freshman. The, the press is definitely having an effect here. Uh, unsettled. 11 to 5, and we are getting close to the 16 minute mark. IPFW with the lead. And the ladies just threw it away. There we go. Another turnover. Here are some of the keys for victory for Centenary today. We were told they need to play consistently, avoid errors from what we just saw. And they need to keep the score close. Uh, if they fall behind in double digits, more often than not, they don't come back. I don't think they have a, a wealth of athletes, and so keeping the score close will be important to them. They can't go on offensive runs. They don't play it. Some fresh troops in. Courtney Reed misses a three, but Tina Moen from Oslo, Norway, gets the offensive boards. Reed, sophomore out of Ohio, gets it back. John Lewis Carlisle. Got four new players in the lineup for IPFW. There's Kayla Kovach from the Cleveland, Ohio area. Lob pass to Namoan, knocked away by four. Good recovery by Reed. 12 on the shot clock. There's still time to run the offense. Tina Moan from 17 feet gets the friendly roll. Everything's falling, Mike. And that's a good sign thus far. IPFW up 13 to five. Carolina Zalaga with a basketball. Tries to hit Farrell down low. Back to Zalaga, driving on Reed. Shot up, no good. Loose ball on the deck. Farrell, outside shot. She gets the favorable bounce. Offensive rebound. And Farrell now the leading scorer that's active for Centenary. Gets her first points of the day. 13-7, and we're under 15 minutes left here in the opening half. Ball knocked out of bounds by Zalaga, and that will send us to a timeout. 
14.52 left in half number one here at the Coliseum. It's IPFW 13, Centenary 7, and this is IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Hi, I'm Russell Simmons. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, and it's cruelty to animals. Emmy was a victim of cruelty and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it, because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country, and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick, or fly, or cool, or none of that. It's just cruel. If you're aware of any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do. Now, make a difference. She can't do it for herself. We want to take a moment and say thank you to today's game sponsor. It's 816 Pint and Slice, located at 816 South Calhoun Street in Fort Wayne. For fine pizza and drinks, it's 816 Pint and Slice. Back here at the Memorial Coliseum, the home away from home for IPFW's women's basketball team, the Macedons have a 13-7 lead on Centenary College. IPFW with the basketball. Hannah Tiki, sophomore from Kokomo, on the floor for the first time. Inside to Kovach. Kayla, ball knocked out of bounds, and they'll say last touch by Kayla. So Sarah gets the basketball. Now IPFW getting off to a good start shooting wise. Yeah, six of 10 now, and uh, I think that uh, you know that's the kind of cure that they need for their recent disease. <laughs> The ladies, and that nickname is correct, the ladies of Centenary have the basketball. Joseph to Zalaga. Sarah Haluska causing some problems. Now they get it across to Monique Jefferson, wearing the number one on her maroon jersey. 14 and a half minutes left in the half. Yeah, yeah. Up by sixth, ball knocked away in a turnover. And that is the sixth turnover on Centenary. Keys to victory for the Dons, Al. Well, uh, they obviously have to make some shots. They haven't been doing that lately. They need to get on the boards and keep that differential down. And uh, playing hard for 40 minutes. Chris's teams will play for 40 minutes, so I'm sure that'll happen. So. Tina Moe, the baseline jumper, and the junior has her second field goal. 15-7 now with 14-09 left in the first half. A little trap near midcourt. Almost another turnover there. Jefferson gets it to fourth. Down low to Farrell. Back out to Monique Jefferson from the foul line. In and out. Tough break, but the putback is good. By Leslie Forrest. She now has four points. Back comes IPFW. Kovach on the horn to Moen. Courtney Reed watched by Zalaga. Tiki for three. No. Nice. Rebound by Haluska to Moen. Off the glass and in. Good teamwork there. Good job by Sarah. Interesting, we've uh, less than five minutes into the game and Chris had 10 players in already. It is 17 to nine. And the ball knocked out of bounds. Pass intended for Leslie Forrest. Well, another substitution coming in. Julianne Huna, number 50, 6'3", senior from Halley, Germany. And John Lewis Carlisle coming in as well. And it'll be Centenary Basketball. Jefferson to inbound it. Farrell wants to drive. Oh, ball kicked out of bounds. It remains uh, the ladies. Defensive activity on the IPFW's part is really good at this point. Uh, lots of wet arms and hands and feet all over the place. Pass for Joseph. Zalaga. Like and she travels. Yep. That is the sixth turn, seventh turnover. Here's Chris Paul, you see, the, in his third year. Seven turnovers, and I think three of them I know have been traveling calls. Yes. Centenary playing man-to-man -man defense, and Tiki thought uh, that Julianne Huna was going to zig, and Julie zagged, and the Dons commit their first turnover. 
12.53 left in the half, 17-9 our score, IPFW on top. Bethany Joseph to Carolina Zalaga. Flexion there. Pressure put on by IPFW, but the ladies get it across midcourt. Here's Monique Jefferson, top of the key. Down to 10 already. Farrell, watched by Tina Mullen. Jefferson's going to have to force something up. Three on the shot clock. Forrest, guess what? A traveling call. And that has Steve Joseph up off the bench. Chelsea Jackson back on the floor for Hannah Tiki. Steve Curtis in his second year as the head coach of Centenary. Last year, the ladies were 9 and 20. Jordan Zoop back on the floor as well. You're right, Al. Chris is bringing them in and often. Yep, we've got 11 in the lineup so far. Three-point shot, good. Ooh. That's Jordan Zoop's second tray. And thus far, this is the best shooting IPFW has done all year. They're 9 of 14 from the floor. As we are under 12 minutes here in half number one. Boy, what pressure by Zoop. Jefferson watched by John Lewis Carlisle. Forrest. Ball knocked away. Good play by Zoop. Moen picks it up. Tina one on three at the moment. Now she's going to hold up, get some help. Tina in the lane, takes it, and tried to hit Chelsea Jackson, but the pass a little wide. Brings us to another timeout. 11.32 left in the half. It's all Mastodons thus far. They're up on the ladies 20 to 9, and we're back at the Coliseum in a moment on CATV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at $2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. Back here at the Memorial Coliseum. You see Jordan Zoop, freshman point guard out of Alacupa, Pennsylvania, knocking down her second three-point field goal of the afternoon. These two teams, both members of the Summit League, and entering play today. You see Oral Roberts in Western Illinois on top of 3-0. and Oakland 3-1, South Dakota State 3-1. and North Dakota State, IPFW 2-2. Two and two. And then you see Centenary down in ninth place at 0-3. So it's a big game for both teams. Centenary looking for their first road win in a Summit League history. This is their fourth year in the league, and they have yet to win a game on the road. The ladies do get the ball up the floor. Joseph watched by Zoop. Sarah Weiler, number 52, on the floor for the first time. Down to eight in the shot clock. Farrell looking for help. Jefferson, 15-footer. Monique Jefferson took almost the entire 30 seconds, but she did knock down the shot. So it's 20 to 11. Tina Moen up high. She likes that about 17-footer, but that time it's Ooh, off drop. the rim. And Julie picked up a foul over top. Julianne Huna going to be called for an over-the-back foul, her first, and that's the first team foul on IPFW today. 10.47 left until intermission. IPFW again with full court defense here. Michelle Hale down low to Weiler, back up top to Farrow, and she'll launch one from outside. That's no good, and Zoop picks up the loose ball. Jordan pushing it up the floor. Here's John Lewis Carlisle from 15. No. Bethany Joseph with the carom. IPFW now 9 of 16 from the floor. They've missed their last two. 
Joseph from downtown. Offensive rebound. Up and in by Michelle Hale. So yeah, I was fearful of this. You just can't uh, clean up those offensive boards. Sitting there hanging around. They're just down by seven, 20 to 13. Tina Mullen, yes, and it's a three. Beautiful stroke. Tina with nine points already today. Tina is six foot and shoots from over her head. It makes it very difficult to block her shot. Here's Jefferson wanting to drive on Chelsea Jackson. Maybe work it around. Down low, inside for Weiler, driving on Huna, and she gets the friendly roll. Boy, that was real fun. <laughs> Sarah Weiler in the books with her first points. 23-15, we're down to 9-19, left in the half. Going with the hot hand, and it's Tina Mowen once again. Tina in double figures with 11 points. 25-15, 9.05 left in the half. Miss Carlisle hit the deck. Jefferson's giving up the dribble to Weiler. Ooh. Almost a steal by Jana. Ten on the shot clock. Monique Jefferson trying to rub off a pick. Joseph off the rim, no good. And this time it's Chelsea Jackson with the rebound. Good block out by the freshman who has some wheels. Shot up, no. Gets her own rebound. Back up, no again. A little out of control. Michelle Hale clears the boards. And here's Bethany Joseph wants to drive on Jordan Zoop. Another and steal. a steal. Ball oh. on the floor, and it'll be a jump ball. And, well, one official thought it was jump ball. One official said 30-second timeout. Are they going to call the violation, or are they going to? They're making up their mind. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. I didn't see the timeout called. Well, while they make up their mind on what they're going to call, we're going to remind you to get out to Pink Out Saturday, February 2nd here at the Coliseum in honor of breast cancer survivors. Wear your pink shirts, sweaters, shorts, socks, even shoes, and come on out for an afternoon of great basketball as the Macedons take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader. The women's game is at 1 o'clock, the men's game is at 4, and a portion of each ticket sold will be donated to the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Monography Unit. Get out to Pink Out, February 2nd. Well, Alan Buck, I think they're going to... Uh, yeah, they're the, the time out. charge that timeout to IPFW. What I want to see is who's going to get the basketball. That's our ball. Uh, I think what we got was we got the timeout before the held ball, and so we keep the possession now. Well, that's a break for IPFW. Absolutely. Courtney Reed, Natalie Roberts back on the floor, along with Samantha Edwards, Hannah Tiki, and John Lewis Carlisle. 25-15 our score. Inside to Roberts, Natalie playing well as of late, and she banks it off the glass and in. Good feed from Jonna. Natalie told me before the game that she was made uh, a captain of this team, along with Nan Moore and John Lewis Carlisle, and she was really proud about that. That's really good for her. Weiler short on the jumper, and Roberts with the board. And back we go the other way. FW going from left to right in your TV screen. And Jana Lewis Carlisle is fouled. Monique Jefferson picks up the foul, and that is the first centenary foul of the afternoon. And that brings us to a timeout. 7.47 left here in the first half. Our score, IPFW 27, centenary 15, and you're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, 
night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, your graduate university. Everybody to the Memorial Coliseum along with Alan Buck. I'm Mike Moss. 7.47 left here in the first half and the Mastodons are having their way at the moment. They're up on the ladies 27-15 and Al, both teams are shooting well from the floor. Sure they are. I think the, the difference is that uh, Centenary just is not comfortable against the pressure defense. John Lewis Carlisle inbound the ball to Courtney Reed. Back to Jana, the senior from Lexington, Kentucky. 14-footer is good. Jana with eight points here in the first half. And a steal. And a steal. Sam. That pressure defense again. Tiki from downtown. In and out. No. But the putback. Oh, good hustle. Samantha Edwards didn't get the bucket, but she'll get to shoot two free throws. I don't know and you noticed it or not, Mike, but sent into the seats over on the far side and then ran back here in time to get on the board and get that rebound. The foul was on Michelle Hale for her first. Samantha Edwards, pretty good free throw shooter. She knocks down the first. Sam, 86% from the free throw line, and she gets another here. And that one is good as well. Boy, IPFW hitting their shots, whether they're the freebies like Edwards just had or from the floor. Driving to the basket, Zalaga shot a little too strong. Lewis Carlisle with the rebound. And here comes IPFW back on the run. Tiki for three. Again, in and out, no good. Edwards with another offensive board, tied up. Well, bounce pass to Roberts. Thought a jump ball white might be called, Al. It looked like it should have been. <laughs> That's what Steve Curtis was telling to one of the officials. Yeah. We are under the seven minute mark here in the half. Another pull up jumper by Lewis Carlisle. Misses everything, but Reed with an offensive board. Fresh 30. Tiki likes it from downtown. Missed it, got her own rebound, missed it again. Roberts hustles for it. Wow, Don's got a break. Yes. Timeout called by Chris Paul. I thought that was over and back myself. I believe it was. Well, the second timeout called by Chris Paul comes with 6.39 left in the first half. IPFW out in front, 31 to 15. Well, For tickets to IPFW athletic events, call 260-481-6000, or you can go to the IPFW athletics website at gomastodons.com. Again, that phone number, 481-6000. Online address, gomastodons.com. And you can see there discounts to Royal Dons Club members. Check about the family four packs and senior, Saturdays, uh, senior Saturdays as well. Bring your group to the hoop. Call 481-6372. I think I've seen a little fatigue on the part of Sentinel in the last few minutes. IPFW thought they had committed the turnover. Instead, they get the uh, early Christmas present. Mm -hmm. Reed, watched by Zalaga. Courtney attacking the glass. No good. Roberts fighting for the rebound. And Edwards picks it up. Samantha's all over the place right now. IPFW leading in the rebound uh, department 14 to 11. 618 left here in the first half. 31-15 our score. IPFW on top. Reed shot partially blocked. And here's Monique Jefferson. Outlet pass to the cherry picker Zalaga. And it's knocked out of bounds by Tiki. Good defense by Hannah Tiki. Tina Mowen checks back in. And let's see who takes a seat. Jenna Lewis Carlisle will sit down. 6.06 left in the half. 31-15 our score. IPFW on top. It's Centenary with the ball. Weiler. Boy, I thought she was fouled. IPFW getting a lot of breaks here early on. One thing that's happening is the officials aren't blowing a lot of fouls either way. Edwards top of the key. They'll probably change in the second half. And stealing it, or attempting to steal it, was Michelle Hale. Should also note that number 34 is Ashley Jackson for a Centenary, a 5'10 freshman from Shreveport. She's in the game for the first time. Jordan Zoop checks back in for Hannah Teak. It'll be IPFW basketball. And 
Steve Curtis in front of us complaining to one of the officials, and I have to say, I, I don't blame him. Yep. Here is Zoop being watched by Monique Jefferson. Tatina Moen is already in double figures with 11 points. She's fouled, no call. Shreveport gets, I should say Centenary, gets the ball. And back they come the other way. Jefferson spinning on Zoop. Off the grim, no good. Loose ball, and it's out of bounds, staying at uh, the centenary end. Well, they're consistent. They're calling nothing. Wholesale substitutions, Bethany Joseph and Farrell. And uh, who was the third? I want to say Forrest, Leslie Forrest back on the floor. We're down to the 523 mark in a very quickly played first half. Joseph watched by Zoop. Jackson double teamed and now we have a foul. Kayla Kovach will be charged with the personal. That's her first, team second. Non-shooting foul, Jackson to inbound it. For the ladies of Centenary College. Three and 10 coming into this game. 0-3 in Summit League play. Ball taken away by Kovach, and oh, they're going to call a jump ball. And uh, possession arrow goes to Centenary. Joseph gets the inbounds pass. Jefferson watched by Reed. Forrest from Farrell, turnaround jumper, good. Was a Les nice shot. Leslie Forrest now with a half a dozen points. Don's coming back quickly. Moen short on the jumper. Joseph with the rebound. Down to 440 remaining in half number one. Forrest again, kicks it out. Shot short by Jackson and we have a foul going against Centenary. And I think Ann Farrell will pick up the foul. Her first, team third. John Lewis Carlisle replacing Courtney Reed. And one thing you and I noticed prior to the start of the game, Centenary short on bodies. They have only nine able-bodied gals ready to play today. And IPFW, on the other hand, has 14. And uh, we've already used more players than they have. Moen from 12 off the rim. She has cooled off. Monique Jefferson posed down the rebound. Back comes Centenary. Trailing 31-17. Jackson watched by Moen. Takes it inside and banks it off the glass and in. Ashley Jackson, the freshman from Shreveport with her first points. Zoop, Kovach. Kayla, Huna, and Julianne hits the jumper. She's always ready to pull off that 16, 17 footer. 33, 19 with 3.35 to go and a half. Jefferson, her pull up jumper is good. Monique Jefferson, well, second well. field goal. We got some good shooters, there's no doubt about that. Centenary, 10 of 24 from the floor. IPFW, 14 of 33 at this juncture. We're already down to 315. In the block to Huna, double team. Kicks it out to Moen. Tina, no good. Tina's missed about her last five shots on yes. the floor. Yeah, but she steal. comes up with the steal there. And Jordan Zoop is fouled by Ann Farrell. Farrell picks up her second, team fourth, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 2.59 left here in the first half. It's IPFW on top of Centenary, 33 to 21, and you're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack.
University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. I can no longer make my mortgage payment. We won't be able to make our mortgage. I can't pay my mortgage right now. Life throws everyone lots of curves. Sometimes it's a loss of income or an expensive health emergency. If that happens to you, call the people expecting your payment and let them know. They'll want to work something out. So at the first sign of payment trouble, call. They can help, but only if they know you need help. To learn more, visit HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. That's Home Loan Learning. little variable. I'll give it a quick flip.
I guess I'm like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I want the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to the website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. You might be surprised to know the biggest dangers your pet faces are everyday dangers like drinking from puddles, being boarded, squirrels in the park, and fleas and ticks. Being a pet is risky business. That's why it's important for every pet to receive a risk assessment and wellness exam twice a year. A risk assessment from your veterinary professionals helps create a unique risk profile for your dog or cat. Your veterinarian can then develop a disease protection plan that's right for your pet and the disease threats in your area. Best of all, twice a year exams help your veterinarian detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So reduce the risks. Contact your veterinarian today for your pet's wellness exam. Because being a pet is risky business. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pinkout? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close, and you'll learn what a pinkout is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Uh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back, everybody, to this Saturday afternoon noon edition of IPFW Women's Basketball here on CATV. I'm Mike Moss, joined by former IPFW assistant coach Alan Buck. And at the break, Al, the Dons are up 38-26. Both teams who are hungry for a win uh, started out shooting well from the floor but tailed off towards the end. But uh, IPFW, uh, they really took it right to Centenary from the get-go, and, and they have the big lead at halftime. I think the uh, full court pressure is obviously key for IPFW. That really uh, seems to throw Centenary off. I'm sure Chris Paul is a little concerned about the way we finished off the half. A few ill-advised shots, a couple of uh, turnovers that hurt us. Uh, I imagine he's doing a little chewing in there about uh, letting the lead uh, dwindle a bit. But overall, a good performance. Well, one thing that you commented on early in the half as we see some highlights is that Chris used his bench as see John Lewis Carlisle knock down a three early on. The senior from Henry Clay High School in Lexington then goes inside. And then back the other way. You see Centenary with a basketball. Bethany Joseph, who has played well of late, scoring a three-pointer. Jordan Zoop, what a half the freshman from Aliquippa had. And another guy who got off to a bread-hot start there is Tina Moen. 
Started out hot, but cooled off in the latter stages of the half. Not to be undone, there is Zalaga, Carolina Zalaga. There's one of those offensive rebounds, Mike, that really hurt us in the first half. Here's Courtney Reed inside uh, Tina Moen, who gets off the quick release. Monique Jefferson misses, but the offensive putback right there by Leslie Forrest. Zoop again from three-point land. And, and again, a putback. And that's something I know you said, Chris, is probably going to talk to the team about in the locker room. We'll give the numbers out in just a little bit. A little hesitation jumper by Tina Moen. Sarah Weiler with that left-handed shot there. Centenary did get back into it. Julianne Huna's only shot of the first half, a clean jumper. And there's Jefferson again with a pull-up. They really do have some shooters, that's for sure. There's an offensive rebound by Samantha Edwards, and then Zoop took the rest of it. Steal there by Edwards, forcing the turnover. Jordan Zoop takes it inside and banks it off the glass and in. It's quite a differential on the turnovers in that half. Four for IPFW and 17 for Centenary. And then final uh, highlight here, Monique Jefferson taking it strong off the glass and in. So those are some of the highlights. Uh, first 20 minutes of action again both teams shot well to start with tailed off towards the end we'll give you the numbers after the break but here at the intermission it is IPFW on top of Centenary 38-26 and Al and I will be back with those first half numbers in just a moment right here on CA TV. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Glycerides or trays have to do to get noticed. Heart disease and stroke? Really? We should pay her more attention. Normal triglycerides are below 150. High triglycerides increase your risk of heart disease. And if you're a woman, that risk goes up even more. After standing in the shadows of good and bad cholesterol, triglyceride, also known as the forgotten fat, is ready to share the spotlight and the attention. Next time you have your cholesterol or blood fats tested, ask your doctor about the role triglycerides play in your heart health. Remember to ask your doctor about the good, the bad, and the forgotten fat. For more information on all of your blood fats, the good, the bad, and the forgotten, go to ForgottenFat.com. And remember, normal triglycerides are under 150. This message brought to you by Sister to Sister, working together for healthy hearts. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pinkout? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close, and you'll learn what a pinkout is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names.
encounter between the Mastodons and Centenary. And there you see the score at the break. IPFW on top, 38 to 26. And we're going to see some first half numbers. Uh, that was, uh, well, there's the son of head coach Chris Paul, right. Jaden, there in the middle of your screen. That's his brother on the right. Yeah, brother Dave. But uh, I mentioned that both teams started out a fire with the basketball shooting wise, and they tailed off at the end. Uh, I know we'll see the numbers up here momentarily. Get a look at the IPFW pep band in action. And uh, the numbers after 20 minutes, IPFW 16 of 42 from the floor for 38 percent, 4 of 13 from three point range for 31 percent, and they are 2 of 2 at the free throw line. They've also dished out 11 assists, pulled down 18 rebounds, and have come up with eight steals. Centenary, 12 of 28 from the floor for 43%, one of four from behind the arc for 25%, and they made the only free throw they attempted. They have five assists, they have pulled down 23 boards, and they have a couple of steals. Those are some of the team numbers. I'll give you some individual numbers here in just a moment. The uh, leading scores in this contest, there is there are two players in double figures, and they're both wearing white and blue uniforms. Jordan Zoop and Tina Moen with 11 points each. John Lewis Carlisle with eight. And for Centenary, Monique Jefferson and Leslie Four, six points apiece. And uh, there you see Ashley Jackson with five. Some other numbers now that weren't up on the screen we can talk about. Turnovers, a big Absolutely. factor, 17 to four. In, uh, 17 turnovers committed by Centenary, four by IPFW. Uh, blocks four to three by the, in favor of the Dons. But the points off turnovers, 20 points off of turnovers by IPFW, just four points scored by Centenary. And that's one reason why IPFW is up by 12 here at the break. Yes, I think the, uh, the turnovers obviously relate directly back to the full court pressure and uh, has been the, the key for IPFW. I think that uh, It'll be interesting to see how uh, Centenary holds up uh, stamina-wise here in the second half. They've played eight players, and uh, uh, they uh, looked a little tired in the last five minutes. I'll give you 10 seconds for each team to play the opposing coach. Uh, what does Centenary have to do to come back? Well, obviously, they have to take care of the ball a lot better than they did. Uh, their shooting's been fine as long as they've had an opportunity to get a shot off, but if you turn it over before it gets to midcourt, you got problems. And conversely, if you're Chris Paul. Well, I think we... Uh, we can see that uh, they're getting beat a little bit on the boards, and so uh, that would be a key factor as far as I'm concerned. Well, 20 minutes remain to be played here at the Coliseum. IPFW with the advantage at the moment, 38-26, and we'll bring you the second half of action from the Coliseum in just a moment right here on CATV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at 20. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Centenary holds up uh, stamina-wise here in the second half. They've played eight players, and uh, uh, they uh, looked a little tired in the last five minutes. I'll give you 10 seconds for each team to play the opposing coach. Uh, what does Centenary have to do to come back? Well, obviously, they have to take care of the ball a lot better than they did. Uh, their shooting's been fine as long as they've had an opportunity to get a shot off. But if you turn it over before it gets to midcourt, you've got problems. And conversely, if you're Chris Paul. Well, I think we, uh, we can see that uh, they're getting beat a little bit on the boards. And so uh, that would be a key factor as far as I'm concerned. Well, 20 minutes remain to be played here at the Coliseum. IPFW with the advantage at the moment, 38-26. And we'll bring you the second half of action from the Coliseum in just a moment right here on CATV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What's it like when you hear your calling?
What if it calls you to go halfway around the world? To share your skills. To serve people you've never met. To do things you never thought you could. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? everybody you see centenary coming back onto the floor getting ready to start the second half and looks like their original starting five carolina zalaga michelle hale and farrell let's see leslie forrest and who am i missing i am missing uh, bethany joseph and we're starting the same group for us and that starting five is chelsea jackson john lewis carlisle Jordan Zoop, Samantha Edwards, and Natalie Roberts. And it will be IPFW's ball to start the half. And Jordan Zoop will bring it. IPFW now going from right to left on your TV screen here in the second half. Centenary back out with a man-to-man -man defense. And Jackson wants to drive, forcing it up. Partially blocked. Edwards and Forrest fighting for the rebound. Jump ball, and Centenary will get it. That's an old play that we've run for years, and uh, it almost always works, and that time it didn't. <laughs> Normally the uh, player will break free off the uh, elbow there. Centenary gets the ball up the floor. Farrell going to drive on Roberts and get the friendly roll. And Farrell had just two points in the first half, and she's equaled that here to start the second. Ten-point margin. We played 30 seconds of half number two. Samantha Edwards. Redshirt sophomore out of Okemos, Michigan. John Lewis Carlisle misses on the three, and Farrell knocks it out of bounds, but they're going to say it was last touch by IPFW. So Centenary gets the ball. Again, our officials today, Jerry Gibbons, Don Green, and Mark Briney. And IPFW comes out with a full court pressure, but the ladies seem to break it. Oh, that was a terrible. Zalago. Misses Roberts pulling down the rebound. And here comes IPFW. Jordan Zoop flips it to Jackson. Inside shot, no good. Salaga loses it. Jackson fights for it and comes up with it. Good hustle by the freshman from Flint. Jordan Zoop misses the three. Bodies collide. But no foul called, and here comes Bethany Joseph. Sophomore out of New Iberia, Louisiana. Her last two games coming into this one, she had scored 45 points altogether. Inside spin move by Michelle Hale. She has four. Centenary coming out uh, strong here in the second half. They scored the first four points, and now trail by just eight. Edwards misses the long jumper. And here come the ladies. Carolina Zalaga on the right side to Joseph. Watched by Zoop. Zalaga inside to Hale. Knocked away by Jackson. Loose ball. Forrest picks it up and makes it. Well, Centenary on fire. And timeout called by IPFW, and it's a 60-second timeout, so let's take a break. 17.52 left, and now it's a ball game. 38-32 Dons on CATV. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility, leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? 
learning so you can, can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a potion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. 17.52 left here at the Coliseum. And IPFW's lead has shrunk to 6.38.32. And Al Buck, IPFW 0 for 5 from the floor here in the second half. Centenary 3 of 4. Yeah, we've been very cold since about the 10 minute mark of the first half. Almost Tino Mowen pass really intended for Roberts, there. picked off. Now was a fight, Mowen's got it, and it'll be a jump ball. IPFW will retain possession. Courtney Reed and Tino Mowen back on the floor for IPFW. And I don't know what happened, but IPFW is yet to get untracked here in the second half. And they're going to do a reset of the 30-second shot clock. You hear Steve Curtis in the back saying why to add 15 more seconds. Natalie Roberts strung off the glass. And the senior from Connersville with her second basket. That was a big bucket. Yes, it was. 40 to 32 now the score to lead back up to eight. And Moen with a steal. Pass intended for Joseph. Zoop to Lewis Carlisle. Jada wants to move. Oh, in and out. She hustles and gets her own rebound. Jenna Lewis Carlisle now four of 10 from the floor today. Going back inside, misses the shot, but draws the foul. Foul's gonna be on Leslie Forrest. That is her first, and it's the first team foul here in the second half. And Steve Curtis screaming, and he gets a 30 second timeout called. And Steve is still unhappy Al, about the fact that they reset the shot clock off the alternate. Yeah. It looked like a good call to me. They definitely had possession. We'll learn more about Mastodon Sports by tuning into Mastodon Spotlight each Wednesday and Friday here on College Access Television. Yours truly, Mike Miles, reviews recent IPFW sports activities. We look at game footage and visit with coaches and players. Again, look for Mastodon Spotlight now in its ninth year. Wednesdays at 7.30, Fridays at 6.30 right here on CATV. 17.09 left here at the Coliseum. Mastodon's on top of the Centenary Ladies, 40 to 32. Jonna Lewis Carlisle will shoot two free throws. Jonna is an 83% free throw shooter so far this season. And she knocks down the first. She now has nine points, averaging just a smidge under 19 points per game so far this season. Julianne Hunebeck on the floor for IPFW. Second free throw good as well. Mastodon's 4 of 4 at the line so far today. The lead back up to Ooh. 10. Pressure put on by the Dons, but Centenary gets it over midcourt. Bethany Jost, watched by Courtney Reed. Zalaga. Centenary passing the ball well. Inside Hale, pass intended for four. As soon as I compliment them, Centenary turns the ball over. That makes 20. 20 turnovers there. On the season, they average 23 turnovers a game. So 16-42 and counting. IPFW up by 10, has the basketball. Tina Mowen fakes the outside shot. Now a pull-up jumper. That's no good. Tina hit her first five shots, and now she has missed her last six. Forest high post, but she's used up the dribble. And Farrell. Forrest, turnaround shot is good. Leslie Forrest now in double figures with 10 points. 42-34 with 16.06 to go. 
Zoop, skip pass to Lewis Carlisle, and Jonna will launch a three, no good. Farrow with the rebound. Oh, that was pretty flat. And Farrow averaging just under seven rebounds a contest. Forrest again, count it, and she's got a dozen. That's a six point lead. Closest Centenary has been in a long time. Huna, watched by Forrest. Gets Mona on the wing. Three point shot short. FW now four of six, 17 behind the arc. Joseph. Being hounded by Jordan Zoop. Zalaga. Looking inside the forest. Inside feed for Farrow off the glass and in. And Farrow with six points. Centenary playing much more under control here in the second half. They've cut the lead to four with just under 15 minutes remaining. FW has gone cold. Outside shot from Lewis Carlisle is good. Reverse psychology. Jana now with 12 points. 34-38. And a, a traveling call on Centenary will bring us to a timeout. 14.37 left here at the Memorial Coliseum. Our score, IPFW 44, Centenary 38. You're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, what? Hey there. Fire, fire. 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 Shanti. Yep, Changyopi. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs Salve. are making it happen. Lucky. <laughs> Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Back at the Coliseum, nice feed inside to Ann Farrow for two for Centenary. And IPFW comes right back. John Lewis Carlisle with a pull-up jumper. IPFW, Al, you noted during the break, is just 2 of 11 from the floor here in the second half. One reason why Centenary has pulled to within 6 at 44-38. And we talked about that at the start, that they have been having trouble with their shooting, and it's continuing. Sarah Haluska has checked in for IPFW. Samantha Edwards as well. Huna inside, double team, triple team, ball goes to the floor. And what are they calling? They're calling a foul on Julianne Huna. Her second team first here in the second half. Momentum wearing maroon and white right now. Centenary down by six. Hale, turnaround jumper in and out. No, Forrest with a putback count and she's fouled. Offensive rebound by Leslie Forrest. And the foul is on Julianne Huna, I think, her third. Yes. Second team foul. You see Kayla Kovach, freshman from Lakewood, Ohio, checking back in. And Leslie Forrest at the line. Just a 25% free throw shooter, but she gets the favorable roll. She's making everything she throws up. 44-41, Kovach, big three-pointer. Mark the time, the 14-03 mark. Kayla Kovach's first points of the afternoon could be the biggest of the game for IPFW. The lead back up to six. Nice play by Edwards. Pass knocked out of bounds by Sam, intended for Forrest. 
Ashley Jackson back on the floor for Centenary. She will inbound the basketball. 13.50 left. Forrest back to Jackson. And now we've got Joseph. Loose ball. Zalaga hits the jumper. Carolina Zalaga's first points of the game. And it's a four-point Mastodon lead. Perimeter passing by IPFW now inside to Kovac, and she's fouled by Farrell. Two, two. Three personals on Ann Farrell. Two team fouls in the second half. 47-43 are scored. FW with the lead in the basketball. And a tiki on the floor. Down to 13. 17 left here in the second half. Boy, bodies banging underneath. Edwards to tiki. Nearly loses it. 10 on the shot clock. Reed for three. Way off the mark. Missed everything. And Centenary will get the basketball. IPFW not playing under control. Yeah, uh, it was a terribly rushed shot there. Didn't need to be. Just getting a little uh, excited. Starting point guard Jordan Zoop back on the floor for IPFW. Checked in for, I believe, uh, Courtney, Reed. Courtney Reed. Jackson, the foul line inside for Forrest. Shot no good. Fight for the loose ball, and Tiki comes up with it. Sophomore from Kokomo bringing it up quickly. To Edwards for a baseline jumper. No. Boy, is ice up here. IPFW cold from the floor. Yep. Back come the ladies of Centenary. Chance to cut into a four-point deficit. Bethany Joseph and Zoop's feet collide. Bounce pass into Jackson, and the shot short. Kovach. Knocks the ball away. Centenary retrieves it. Zalaga into the corner for Farrell. Baseline jumper, good. And Farrell with six second half points, eight for the contest. 47-45. The lead has been cut to two. Just under 12 minutes left here at the Coliseum. Tiki will launch a three. In and out, no. Forrest with the rebound and Centenary could tie with a deuce or take the lead with the tray on this trip down. They're 9 of 13 this half. And we've got a whistle and a foul going to be called on IPFW. And the foul. Hannah Tiki commits the foul. Her first team third. And we have timeout on the floor. 11.44 left. IPFW 47, Centenary 45. This is IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Welcome back once again, everybody, to Saturday afternoon. IPFW Women's Basketball here on CATV. 11.44 left in the second half when what once was as high as an 18-point lead for IPFW has dwindled to just 2.47 to 45. And Al Buck, if you can't hit a shot, you usually don't win a game. And IPFW is cold from the floor right now. Yes, they are. 3 of 15 in the second half. Bethany Joseph. Zalaga inside for Farrell from the foul line. 
Gets the friendly roll, and at the 11.33 mark, Centenary ties it up, and Farrell now in double digits with 10 points. And we see Natalie Roberts and John Lewis Carlisle have come back onto the floor for IPFW. Roberts wants to go low, left hand shot way too strong. Zalaga with the board and here come the ladies of Centenary. Chance to take the lead for the first time almost since the beginning. Inside, Jackson blocked by Zoop, picked up by Roberts. Nice defensive play by Jordan Zoop. Here comes John. Tiki will launch a three. No, short, loose ball. They say last touch by Samantha Edwards. It'll be Centenary ball as Tina Moen comes back on the floor for Tiki. Hannah Tiki's 0 for 7 today. She has struggled as most of the team has on the floor recently. Ashley Jackson will bring it up over midcourt. 10.47 to go. Zalaga looking for somebody down low. And instead kicks it out to Joseph for three. No good, but we have a foul on the floor. And it looks like Bethany Joseph is going to shoot not once, but not twice, but three times in the foul line. And the foul is on John Lewis Carlisle, her second, team fourth. And Bethany Joseph, a 5'5 sophomore from New Iberia, Louisiana, to shoot three free throws. And the first one gives Centenary the lead at the 10-40 mark, 48-47. First lead of the game. Joseph is an 87% foul shooter, so it's almost like money in the bank. It's the second one is good. And mark that down, 10-40 mark. It's the third free throw is good. And it's 50 to 47, Centenary. General Lewis Carlisle to Roberts. Natalie forcing up a shot and draws the foul. And looks like the foul, I think, is on Farrell. If it is, that's four. That's a classic. I forgot she was a left hander deal. <laughs> Third team foul. But Natalie Roberts will shoot a couple of free throws. See what the southpaw from Connersville can do. First one is good. Natalie with five points so far this afternoon. And for the season, that is a 67% foul shooter, averaging about five points per contest. Farrell takes a seat. Sarah Weiler comes on the floor for the ladies of Centenary. Second free throw, good as well. IPFW still perfect at the line today, but they've only gone there six times. It is 50 to 49, with 10.23 to go. And Weiler nearly gives it up, almost a palming call. Carolina Zalaga at the high post. To Weiler, 10 in the shot clock. And Centenary throws it away. For their 22nd turnover. 10.05 and Centenary calls a 30-second timeout. So we may keep it right here at the 10.05 mark. One thing to note, uh, Alan Buck, is uh, each team now with just two timeouts left. And we've got 10 full minutes plus left in the basketball game. The latest Mastodon scores and stats are available on the World Wide Web by going to GoMastodons.com. There you can check up on the teams, players, and you can order tickets as well. It's the official Mastodon Athletics website, GoMastodons.com. Well, quite a turn of events. Both these teams shot well early. IPFW jumped out to the big league. I think you and I noted at one point it was 18 points, but yes. since then, Centenary has made the comeback, took the lead for the first time on three Bethany Joseph free throws, and still have a one-point lead with 10 minutes of basketball left to be played. John Lewis Carlisle, pull up jumper, good. That shot's been really effective for her today. About a 15 footer. Johns retake the lead 51 50. Pull up jumper by Jackson, no good. And Samantha Edwards with the boards. Here comes John Lewis Carlisle to Jordan Zoop. Let's see if IPFW can score on this possession. 
stem the tide, so to speak. Driving shot by Lewis Carlisle, no good, but Jenna draws the foul. And you get the feeling now that the senior's gonna take the game into her own hands. And I think Chris has also told her we, she's got to put it on the floor and take it inside a little bit and uh, get to the free throw line. Ashley Jackson with the fouls. You get to look at the second year coach of Centenaries, Steve uh, Curtis. John Lewis Carlin now is three for three at the free throw line. We've taken 21 threes and I think he wants to dial that back a little bit. Jana going for point number 16 and she gets it. And as a team, IPFW is eight of eight at the free throw line so far today. 9.20 to oh. go. Centenary trailing by three. Double team. Joseph gets it to Zalaga. Forrest retrieves the errant pass. Inside, shot no good, but uh, Ashley Jackson was fouled on the play. And the foul is on Tina Mullen, that's her first. Team fifth. It's interesting, uh, the first half foul, each team was called for just four fouls. But here in the first 11 minutes, a total of nine fouls have been called for two teams. That's kind of common, I think. I wonder sometimes if the referees get stats at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Jackson makes the first of her two free throws. She now has six points. And here is the second, and that is good as well. Centenary six of six at the line in the half and seven of seven from the game, so neither team has missed a free throw. Lob pass to Roberts and the low block back to John Lewis. Carlisle for three. Another no. Natalie with a putback. Got it, she's fouled. Look at the emotion on the senior. Big rebound and put back. Forrest picks up her second foul, team fifth. Monique Jefferson will re the lineup for Centenary. What a rebound by Natalie Roberts. Uh, we talked about it during this contest. IPFW has had trouble. In fact, they have been outboarded today, 38-24. And the foot back, the bucket, and let's see if she can make the free throw. Yes. We've actually been doing a better job on the offensive boards than we have on the defensive class. 56-52 with 8.52 to go. Full court pressure by IPFW and a turnover. Weiler stepped on the end line. Turnover number 23. Centenary's primary weakness is their ball handling. And, uh, when the pressure works, it's uh, pretty effective. Zuba launch a three. Yes! Jordan Zuba, their fourth tray of the afternoon. She has 14 points. FW was down 50 to 47, and they have gone on a 12 to 2 run. Amazing what making a few shots will do. <laughs> Joseph, watched by Moen. We're down to 822. Three-point shot on the way. No, doesn't hit anything. And the ball goes over to IPFW with 820 left. Centenary just one of five from three-point range today. Look at the difference. IPFW has hoisted it up 23 times behind the arc, and Centenary just five. We've made six, but four of them are from Jordan, so everybody else is having a little trouble with it. Jonna misses a three, and Forrest pulls down the rebound to yeah. Ashley Jackson. Well, I think Chris wanted that shot. And there's another turnover. Good defense by Natalie Roberts. And we have timeout on the floor. 7.58 left here at the Coliseum. It's the Mastodons 59, the ladies 52. And this is IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. Capsicum Anum, Agaricus Bisporus, Allium Sepa. Can we eat this?
peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Tell me what's bothering you. As a hot dog, I know I'm responsible for some bad things. Now they say my cholesterol is a risk factor for stroke. And how does that make you feel? Like a big weedy. High cholesterol is an important risk factor for strokes. Eating right and exercising can help. But National Stroke Association wants you to know that even the healthiest people are at risk. So ask your doctor about medicines that can lower cholesterol, like statins. It's even more important if you've already had a stroke. Visit stroke.org today. Summit League Women's Basketball today at the Memorial Coliseum. I'm Mike Moss, joined by Alan Buck. 7.58 left in the second half. 59-52, IPFW with the lead and the basketball. And they're currently on a 12-2 run after having trailed 50-47. to Lewis Carlisle watched by Monique Jefferson. In the corner, Zoop for three again! Jordan Zoop now with a career high. Now well, she's one point shy of her career high, 17 points. Career high in threes, however. And she has knocked down five of them today. Huge. Weiler, watched by Natalie Roberts. To Jefferson. Jefferson from the elbow, yes. Monique Jefferson now with eight points. Centenary hanging in there, they're down by eight. 62-54 as we near the seven minute mark. Lewis Carlisle feeling it. They're going to call it a three. It took a while before they decided. Back to double digits, Mike. The FW now has knocked down eight triples this afternoon. Jefferson watched by Lewis Carlisle. 6.42 left. Trying to find Forrest in the low block. Five on the shot clock. Jefferson, the jumper, no. Rebound controlled, however, by Weiler. And another 30 for Centenary. And now we got a hold on IPFW. Samantha Edwards picks up her first foul. Team sixth, one more, and Centenary will be in the bonus. And Farrell coming back with four fouls at the 622 mark, replacing Leslie Forrest. I think that's a conditioning issue. Forrest can't go that long. Kayla Kovach, number 20, coming in for Natalie Roberts, and what a job Natalie has done. Jackson to inbound it. Kicks it way out to Joseph and near midcourt. Jefferson watched by Zoop. Farrell on the baseline. Moves it out. Jackson from the foul line, good. Third field goal for Ashley Jackson. 65-56, we've gone under six minutes. Left here at the Coliseum. Moen, turn around, jumper, in and out, no. Fight for the rebound and Centenary pulls it off. Here's an outlet pass to Ashley Jackson. Jackson wants to drive. No good. We got a foul. I think Kovac is going to be called for being on the back. Really a contrast in statistics with Centenary having all the turnovers and shooting 50% from the field, and we're shooting 36% from the field and having no turnovers to speak of. Two personals on Kayla Kovac, seventh team foul. So Ashley Jackson, who was three for three at the line, shooting one and one. First miss of the day for either team. Zoop with the rebound. It downs up the floor. Five and a half minutes to go. 65-56 IPFW. Kovach wants to get the ball to Lewis Carlisle. Jana wants to do some wheeling and dealing. Here's the jumper, short. Here comes Jefferson, two on three. 
Here's a three on the way, in and out, no. Kovac fighting, but doesn't get the board. Shot no good by Jackson. Needed to secure that rebound. We had it, just didn't play strong. John Lewis Carlisle charged with their third foul. Eighth team foul, and Ashley Jackson will go back to the line, and I think this time she shoots too. First is good. Roberts back in for Kovach. Michelle Hale in for Sarah Weiler. Sarah Haluska comes in for IPFW. Centenary is playing very short at this point in time. They do not have much size on the floor. One more free throw coming for Ashley Jackson. And that's good. The two teams combined today at the foul line are 18 of 19. 450 to go. IPFW up by seven. Haluska to her high school teammate Jordan Zoo. Moen off the glass. No. Here comes Jackson with the board and Jackson on the run. And she holds up. Farrell looking for somebody down low. To Zalaga. Jackson. Watched by Haluska. Inside, shot up, no good by Hale, but she's fouled. And she'll shoot two. Keep putting them on the line here. Second foul on Tina Moen, ninth team foul on IPFW. We're down to 419 left here in the second half. And Michelle Hale at the line for the first time today. Hale, a 62% free throw shooter. First one off the back of the iron, no good. Julianne Huna will check in for the Mastodons, replacing Tina Moen. And one more free throw coming for the 5'11 freshman from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Michelle Hale. No That's good, Roberts with the board. Natalie now with a half a dozen rebounds this afternoon. 65-58, IPFW with 4.10 left. Inside to Zoop, ball loose, picked off by Joseph. IPFW's fifth turnover. And traveling called. And it's 25 for Sydney. <laughs> Final media timeout coming with 3.59 left. Our score, IPFW 65, Centenary 58. You're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to the website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pink out? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close, and you'll learn what a pink out is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum. 3.59 left in our women's game featuring the IPFW Mastodons and the ladies from Centenary College. IPFW leading 65-58. And they will have the basketball. And Jordan Zoop, who has 17 points, gets it to her teammate Sarah Haluska. High post Julianne Huna. Julie's gonna take it herself, looks for Roberts and loses it. Zalaga is fouled. 
I think by Natalie Roberts. Not the best pass by Huna. It's the seventh IPFW turnover. And Natalie does pick up her second foul. That's the 10th team foul, so double bonus situation for Centenary for the final 341, meaning two free throws. And Carolina Zalaga at the line for the first time. Makes the first. That's her third point of the afternoon. Tina Mowen back in for Julianne Huna. Centenary, 10 of 13 at the free throw line. Second free throw good as well. Chris had some words of wisdom for Julie as she walked by there to the bench. <laughs> well, I'll ask you what they are maybe at an opportune time. Yeah, they were probably short words. <laughs> <laughs> John Lewis Carlisle in the trees. Gets it to Roberts off the glass and in. Beautiful assist. <clears throat> well, John drew him towards her and dished it off to Natalie Roberts. A couple of seniors there working together. Natalie Roberts with 11 points. Her career high is 14. Zalaga being hounded by Ooh, that's a hook. offensive, the hook play called on yes. Carolina Zalaga. That's her first foul. It's a player control foul. Six-team foul, and we're down to 311. Mastodon's up by seven, 67 to 60. Let's go up, take care of the basketball. Zoop being watched by Joseph to Lewis Carlisle. Rubbing off a Moen pick. Gets it back out to Tina. She'll launch it from outside, way off the mark. Roberts fighting for the ball, and Zoop as well. It's loose on the floor. Jump ball called. Possession arrow belongs to Centenary. 2.48 left. The ladies of Centenary and IPFW will come out with the full court pressure. Oh, they get it across to easily. Hale's going to take it all the way downtown. And offensive foul, I think, on um, yes. Michelle Hale. Offensive foul. Out of control. Her second. And uh, perhaps a little inexperienced. Michelle Hale was just a freshman. Natalie's made several nice plays on both ends here in this second half. That was another one right there. She accepted that charge. And timeout called, and is it a full or a 30? It is a 30-second timeout. Now well, Chris Paul now has just one timeout left at his arsenal. Centenary has two. Now, I want to uh, also ask you if you've ever heard about the Royal Dons Club. Participate in the excitement of Mastodon Athletics with the Royal Dons Club. It's IPFW's official athletic booster organization. Members enjoy athletics-related special events, priority access to tickets, and more. To learn about the Royal Dons Club, call 260-481-6894. Or you can write to the Royal Dons Club, 2101 East Coliseum Boulevard, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Or option three is going to the IPFW Athletics website at gomastodons.com. Also, uh, once again, get this moment to take a chance and take a moment to thank our sponsor today, and that is 816 Pint and Slice, located at 816 South Calhoun Street in Fort Wayne. For fine pizza and drinks, it's 816 Pint and Slice. Pizza sounds pretty good, right? That's what I was thinking. I was just going to say something. Right there. I have to stop there after the game. You can enjoy it after the game. I've got another game yeah, to work with game. Charlie Washington as the men's teams from these two institutions will duke it out. Sarah Haluska will inbound the basketball to John Lewis Carlisle. And I expect to see the ball in her hands a lot in his final two and a half minutes. IPFW up by seven. Roberts tries to force it up. Loose ball, no foul. Zalaga picks it up. Here come the ladies of Centenary. Jackson, Farrell from the foul line gets the friendly roll. Ann Farrell had two points in the first half. She has 10 in the second half for 12 overall. Centenary hanging in there, down by five as we near the two-minute mark. Zoop to Lewis Carlisle on the wing. Jonna taking it strong. Off the glass, count she's fouled. That's a basketball player right there. Senior play by the senior from Lexington, Kentucky. That foul, I believe, 
Hale, her third, team in eighth. And John Lewis Carlisle with a chance for the conventional three-point play. And it's good. Really showed her strength there on that drive. Just took the contact and then waited and put it up. Macedon's a perfect 10 at the foul line today. 10 of 10 on the putback. Hale, no good. Lewis Carlisle with the board. 144 and counting. IPFW 70, Centenary 62. The Don's trying to break their seven game losing streak. Get back over the 500 mark in conference play as well and we have a foul now. Foul's gonna be on Ashley Jackson, her second team ninth. Jordan Zoop, 5'7 freshman from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania going to the line for the first time today. Chance to tie her season and career high as a collegian of 18 points. And she does. Jordan got the 18 points for the first time in her first game at the University of Toledo, the season opener. Second free throw good as well. So a new high for the freshman, 72-62. Less than 90 seconds. Joseph. Zalaga. Zalaga being watched by Haluska. Pass for Farrell. Knocked out of bounds. And they say touched by a Mastodon. 16 on the shot clock. 117 on the game clock. Carolina Zalaga to inbound it. Looking, looking, looking. Gets it out to Hale. Farrell in the paint. Nice touch for the freshman and Farrell. 72-64 with 65 seconds left. Zoop, watched by Joseph. Jordan brings it back out to Haluska. And Sarah is fouled by Zalaga. Did you find that unusual that they took so long to make that foul with yeah. time on the clock? I, I don't understand that. Carolina Zalaga with her second, but it's the 10th team foul in the half, so Sarah Haluska, the other half of the Aliquippa connection, will go to the free throw line. Sarah has yet to score this afternoon. And I just jinxed her. It's the first Mastodon miss after 12 free throws in a row hit. I think it's important to note, Mike, that John has come up with 14 big points here in the second half. I think that uh, is a little more in centenary he's going to be able to handle. And Natalie Roberts with nine as Haluska makes the second free throw, so she is in the books with a point. Nine-point Mastodon lead with 47 seconds to go. Inside, sure. Hale off the glass, no good, but we've got a foul. I think Jordan Zoop she can't believe it. And she is charged with her first foul. So with a tenth of a second shy of 40 seconds left, Centenary going to the line. Michelle Hale for two. And it's good. Hale now with five points. I think we're going to the five guard offense here. Anatiki, Courtney Reed check in. Sarah Haluska, Natalie Roberts check out. My unsung hero is Natalie Roberts with 11 points today. Four field goals and three of three at the foul line. And don't uh, forget the uh, six rebounds yes. and an assist. Very good game. Second free throw by Hale is good. Michelle now with a half a dozen. Moen back to Zoop. Remember, there's no 10 second line of women. Basketball, just 30 seconds to get the shot off. Jordan waiting for the double team, gets it to Lewis Carlisle. There should be somebody open. Reed. To Tiki, off the glass, no good. She gets the rebound, puts it back up, count it, and she's fouled. That may be the icing of the cake. Yeah, stick a fork in them, they're done. And a Tiki's first points of the afternoon, and the foul, I believe, is on Carolina Zalaga, her third. 20.4 seconds left, and Hannah Tiki, who hit her first 13 free throws of the season, it's actually now 15 of 18. We'll try to complete the three-point play. Jessica Tubert, number three, is a 5'6 junior from Lansing uh, Community College. And number 15 is Maggie O'Connell, also a transfer from Iowa. 
And Tiki knocks down the free throw. 76-66, 17 seconds left. Jefferson down low, shot and missed. Moen with the rebound and a foul, I think, will be on Hale. And we have 9.8 seconds left. Michelle Hale now with four personal fouls. As you see, Steve Curtis, arms folded. That's the first time all day he hasn't been talking to the refs. <laughs> Tina Moen, who had 11 points all in the first half, is yet to score in the second half with a couple of free throws. And the first one is good. Boy, what a job IPFW has done at the foul line today. 15 of 16. Very good. Uh, nice distribution on the points. We've got four players in double figures. Second free throw good as well. Haluska in for Moen. And I know that uh, Tina's parents back in Oslo, Norway, listened to every broadcast over the internet. Hopefully they're catching this one in college56.org today. Jackson with the favorable shot, and it's a long two and a timeout called by Centenary. Coming with 2.5 seconds left. And you see the Centenary huddle. Get out to Pink Out, Saturday, February 2nd, here at the Coliseum, and honor breast cancer survivors. Wear your pink shirts, sweaters, shorts, socks, even shoes, and come out for an afternoon of great basketball as the Macedons take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader. Women's game's at 1 o'clock, the men's game at 4, and a portion of each ticket sold will be donated to the American Cancer Society and Francine's Friends Mobile Monography Unit. Get out to Pink Out, February 2nd. Two and a half ticks left here at the Coliseum, and IPFW about to end a seven-game losing streak. Maggie O'Connor will inbound the basketball and just throw it all the way down the court to Haluska, who flips it to Tubert, who puts it off the glass, count it at the buzzer. That will make our final score this afternoon. IPFW 80, Centenary 68. Mastodons go to five and 10, three and two in conference play, five and two at home. And Centenary will drop to 3 and 11 overall. They are 0 and 7 on the road and 0 and 4 in the Summit League. We'll take a break as players and coaches congratulate each other. Come back with our post game show. IPFW wins it 80 to 68. We're back in a moment on CATV. That book was all right. You know, if she continues to spell product at a rate of three per hour. Unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. The power's out, but you've planned ahead and your food safety plan is on. You've stocked up on shelf-stable foods and a can opener in case you're in the dark for a while. You don't open the fridge, foods there will be safe for up to four hours if the door stays closed. You keep the freezer shut too, and you've kept it full. A full freezer will keep food frozen for about two days. A half full freezer, about one day. For longer outages, you move cold foods to an insulated cooler with plenty of ice or freezer gels, and you use a thermometer to ensure foods remain no higher than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If the power returns quickly, you make sure freezer foods have ice crystals and check foods in the refrigerator with a food thermometer to make sure they're at 40 degrees or below. If not, or if there's any doubt, throw it out. To learn more, log on to AskKaren.gov or call the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Meat and Poultry Hotline at one mp hotline A message from USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. 
Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne. IPFW's women's basketball team snaps a seven-game losing streak as they defeat Centenary College this afternoon, 80-68. to And I'm happy to be joined by IPFW assistant coach Jenny Green. And, boy, doesn't the win feel good? Oh, yes. Back on the right page, finally. Yep. And back at home, uh, we were commenting during the timeout. IPFW started out on fire from the floor. They hit six of their first nine shots. They hit nine of their first 14 shots. And then the basket went away, it yeah, seemed. Yeah, and then we got cold. We got cold, yeah. It was good, though, for our girls' confidence to come out and hit, hit buckets early, you know. And then we did get cold, but we came back and shot the ball relatively fine in the second half. Jenny, talk about the coach's decision to utilize just about Everybody on the bench, the right. full court pressure with multiple substitutions right. early on. Right. Yeah, well, we as a coaching staff have decided that the best way to put ourselves in positions to win games is to be the aggressor um, every game out. So that means we're going to press. And, you know, with the with the stretch that we've had these past uh, this past week playing three games in, you know, seven days or something like that and being on the road so much, uh, we knew we were going to need to sub quite frequently and keep keep the legs fresh. Um, so that's why, you know, we subbed early and subbed often. And, um, and we were able to do that. You know, our bench came in and gave us some really good minutes. I have to ask you, at the 10.40 mark, Centenary took their first and only lead of the game on three free throws um, by Joseph, and they were up 50-47. to 47. What were the thoughts on the bench at that point? Uh, you know, this this game, I mean, it just felt different from the beginning. You know, the girls came out and they hit first few shots and they felt comfortable and you know there was no fear in any of the girls eyes um, you know so we just we got to get back to that we got to get back to playing the way we were early on and playing confident and understanding you know teams are going to make runs but weird and um, played played pretty well we've got about 30 seconds left big senior contributions today from John Lewis Carlisle and Natalie Roberts the junior Tina Moen came through and yep. oh by the way freshman Jordan Zoop with the career high yeah, 19 points including out. five trays big uh, big win for the Dons in preparation for a big game Monday night yes. against Oral Roberts yep yep this this is exactly what we wanted we wanted to come out shoot the ball well give the girls the confidence they need and we're going to take our best shot at Oral and we'll be all right Congratulations, a Thank big you. win, Thank and you. Uh, we'll see you on Monday night. Sounds good. Thanks. That's assistant coach Jenny Green talking about the IPFW 80-68 to win today over Centenary. We'll take a break. Come back. Alan Buckle will join me. We'll give you the highlights. We'll give you the final numbers. 80-68, to the Don's over to ladies, and we're back at the Coliseum in just a moment here on CATV. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. You pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? 
peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Once again, everybody, to the Coliseum, along with Alan Buck, I'm Mike Moss, and happy times are here again for IPFW Women's Basketball. The Mastodons defeat Centenary College this afternoon by a final score of 80-68, to snapping a seven-game losing streak in the process. And what a game, uh, Al Buck, for IPFW, as we're going to take a look at some highlights from this game. Very much. Uh, this was uh, the win they needed, as Jenny said earlier, and uh, a couple of seniors played really good. Nice job from uh, Jonna and... Uh, Natalie Roberts today. There is Natalie There's with Natalie. the right hand layup for the southpaw, banking yes. it off the glass and in. Forrest with the shot. Give Centenary credit because they were down by as many as 18 points in the first half. They were down 12 at halftime, and yet, uh, as we spoke with Jenny about, they actually had taken a lead at 50 to 47 with just over 10 minutes to go. You often see teams climb back, get, get even from a, a huge deficit and it's tough to push it over the edge then and actually get the win and I think that happened to Centenary. You know they were short man so to speak anyway of yep. course their leading scorer on the year out for with an injury and that uh, was Sierra Bush who was averaging 16 points a game and Roberts again with the putback. That's and, the big one. There. And the emotion that was a conventional yep. three-point play which stretched the lead to 59-52. Jordan Zoop, the freshman from Aliquippa. I don't know why I like saying Aliquippa, PA. Well, you're going to be saying a lot in the next three or four years, I think. Monique Jefferson with a three. And then here's the senior, John Lewis Carlisle, taking control on that run. Nice lob pass to the freshman, Ann Farrell, who kicks it out. Nice shot there for the ladies of Centenary College. Nice feed to Roberts from Lewis Carlisle there. And then there's Farrell. Had only two first half points, but scored a lot more in the second. One of the things that Centenary did not have in their arsenal was they really didn't have the three point threat. They were one of six for the day. Uh, so they lost uh, 21 points in difference between IPFW and Centenary on the three point line. And Atiki with a put back and the late going. And there's here's Maggie Elcano with the last. Uh, Inbounds pass. Again, this was give and go, and Jessica Tubert scored at the buzzer. And here are the final numbers. IPFW 28 of 76 on the floor for 37%, 8 of 25 from behind the arc for 32%, 16 of 17 at the line. That's great going there. 17 assists, 30 rebounds, 10 steals. Centenary 27 of 56 for 48%, just 1 of 6 behind the arc. 13 of 16 at the line. They had 16 assists, 48 boards, and four steals. It, okay. Individually, the uh, individual numbers, well, John Lewis Carlisle, 22 points. She has led the Dons in scoring every game this season. Jordan Zuba, career high, 19 points, including five three-pointers. And Tina Moen with 13 points, 11 of those coming in the first half. And for Centenary, their leading scorer is Leslie Forrest with 15 points. And Farrell, 14, 12 in the second half. And Ashley Jackson with 13. Uh, in spite of being out-rebounded, uh, IPFW came off with the win. And, and now they can look ahead to a big game Monday night against ORU. Turnovers versus rebounds. That was the difference. Al, thank you so much for joining us again this Thank afternoon. You. That's it again from the Coliseum in our first half of the doubleheader. IPFW snaps a seven-game losing streak. Final score again, the Mastodons 80, Centenary 68. We invite you to join us again on February 2nd for the next edition of Women's Basketball here at CATV. North Dakota State in town on Pink Out Day. If you're watching live, stay tuned. Coming up at the top of the hour, uh, say in about an hour, 7 o'clock, it'll be the men's basketball game against Centenary. If you're watching on tape, thank you for tuning in today. I'm Mike Maas for Alan Buck. You have been watching IPFW Women's Basketball on CATV. Good afternoon from the Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne, Indiana.